how comfortable are you with elbow bumps? There you go. <laughs> all right, all right. This is In The Loop. I'm Christian Bryant. You'll notice something different going forward. We're moving the show from 30 minutes to an hour. So, like, ITL at 200%. Finally large enough for my pandemic frame. When you think about the long-term impacts of this pandemic, you might think about the impact on public health, on education, on the economy, but all of that depends on the impact the pandemic has on people and the amount of risk or caution each of us is willing to take. So that's what we're focused on tonight, how the pandemic has changed our own human behavior and how much of that change might be here to stay, even after the White House has declared independence from COVID. You might call this a pandemic vibe check. So let's get into it. One thing right off the bat here, when we say changes in human behavior, we're not just talking about handshakes and social distancing. We're talking about going to the office, hitting up a crowded concert, shopping in-store versus online. Those things that for a lot of folks feel so normal and yet also kind of strange now. Take that last example. One recent survey found that more than one in four Americans who regularly shopped in stores pre-pandemic said they weren't going back to in-store shopping even after being vaccinated. No doubt a lot of that foot traffic has turned into online shopping. The pandemic basically hit the nitro boost on trends that were already moving toward online shopping, with e-commerce seeing a huge bump in 2020. But the decline of in-store shopping also has a lot to do with all these new options that have really just come into their own during the pandemic, like curbside pickup or app-driven drop-offs or having a drone deliver your groceries. The future is wild, man. So we can't say we're surprised that a recent study predicted that 80,000 US retail stores, or 9% of all the nation's in-person stores, will close up shop by 2026. This rapid reshaping of what it's like to shop in America is entirely driven by changes in human behavior and just what we're comfortable with. And the science around these risk calculations we're all making is pretty fascinating. Now, when you ask the social psychology experts about what's next for human behavior and risk taking, you get two major schools of thought here. One of those assumes that humans coming out of this past year of social isolation are likely to look around and say, hey man, we're back, roaring 20s all over again, YOLO. Let's make up for some lost time and get back out there, outside, is open. When we're restricted from an activity, there can be this pent up demand and then this sort of like burst of enthusiasm for that activity. By the time hair salons were able to open up, everyone's hair was all long and straggly. So rather than just having a few people each week who needed a haircut, like everyone needed a haircut that first week. Psychologically, you can have that same kind of pent up demand for a desired activity like going to a restaurant or going to a sporting event or getting together with friends. But another factor to consider here, humans are creatures of habit. So there is a social psych line of thinking that says, if someone has gotten used to working from home over the past year, they want to keep working from home. If they've gotten used to online shopping and app deliveries, that's what they're sticking with for the long haul. Humans are quite habit driven. And when we engage in a particular behavior in a particular setting over many instances, we form a habit it, or then we start almost automatically exhibiting that behavior when we're in that context. And it's hard to just flip that habit on a dime just because some CDC official now tells you you're allowed to do something different. Either way, the science around human behavior seems to suggest that the science around public health has limited influence here. Generally, people are less likely to be swayed by big data about what's safe and what's not and more likely to be influenced by what our friends are doing around us. Somebody sticks out their hand to me for a handshake, I'm likely to oblige. Shopping, concerts, restaurants, same concept. In this pandemic, what our own social circles do drives our own decision-making and shapes where all these industries and parts of our modern lives are headed long-term. Now, to that point, it's one thing to look at the survey numbers and the behavioral science and do the whole newsman thing at the desk. But keep in mind, there's the data and then there's the vibes. Like, 
You know what I'm saying? So we figure, why not break out of here and mix it up with a few folks to conduct some very scientific field research on people's comfort levels and things opening back up in this pandemic, shall we? How comfortable are you with elbow bumps? I'm not comfortable. I feel elbow bumps. That means you're in my space. Mm -hmm. You are too close to me. I feel like I know how the rest of these are gonna go. How do you feel about fist bumps? I can do fist bumps okay. with friends. Uh, yeah, heck yeah. I guess I'm a friend now. We're, friend now. <laughs> We're more than a year into this pandemic and with restrictions letting up, many of us are gauging how comfortable we are doing the things we used to do. So we partnered with our friends over at Ipsos for an exclusive survey and found that most Americans are okay with getting back to pre-pandemic behaviors. Nearly 70% said they're all right being indoors in a public place without a mask on. Nearly 65% said they're comfortable with hugging people and 60% said they're cool with handshakes. We've got the numbers, we've got the data, but we're really trying to see what the vibes be like, right? How exactly are people feeling about this point in the pandemic and doing things like hugging or giving each other handshakes or elbow bumping or going into a bar or a restaurant? We couldn't think of a better way to put our thumb on the pulse of how folks are feeling than to conduct a highly scientific survey. And I have a pandemic vibe check list. How comfortable are you with elbow bumps? There you go. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll check that out. Fist bumps. Yeah. Boom. Look at that. Handshakes. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Ah, uh, it would have to be a family member. Gotcha. Family member, not not just anybody casual. Yeah, less comfortable. Less comfortable. Yeah. Okay, okay. I won't try you out then. <laughs> hugs. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> Look at that. That was a good hug, too. Like, we've known each other for years. Un <laughs> abrazo. Here's the last one. How comfortable are you with being in public places, indoors, without a mask on? Oh, no. No, no not comfortable no. at all. Not, not if there's a lot of people in there. You know, I'm fully vaccinated. My friends, my, you know, my social group's fully vaccinated. And DC itself has, like, really low case rate and positivity, right? So I feel like this is a good place to be. I'm gonna give that an eight out of 10. It depends like how crowded the situation is. What's informing your, your comfortability there? Going by what the experts are telling us and I'm lucky to be in a program where I get to talk to experts every single day um, and really zero in on that because that's your best source. It's, it's almost like when you're driving, mm -hmm. you drive defensively. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, I, if, if, if I'm in certain areas or whatever, and if, if they're not practicing the proper protocol, then I'm, I'm going to try to evade that, <laughs> go somewhere else. The U.S. pandemic outlook has been a little brighter lately, hence the talk about restaurants, concerts, etc., and not grimmer things. But this is, of course, a global virus, and the outlook really varies across regions and borders. In many parts of the world right now, it's a bit darker, either due to spiking virus variants or just a lack of vaccine access. To give us a full international picture of this point in the pandemic, we're bringing in newsy reporters from across four other continents around the world. We'll start with Luke Hanrahan in London. I'm Luke Hanrahan in the United Kingdom. As you can see here in Soho, things are returning to normal and it's a similar picture across the country with people getting back to bars and restaurants in great numbers. British retail has also reported its most successful month in over four years as people return to the high street in large numbers. That's down in large part to the fact that people are fed up of shopping online as they've been restricted from shopping for so long. People are still wearing masks inside uh, restaurants, but not when they're sitting down and eating. When they're on the move, they're wearing them on public transport, though that is due to end on July the 19th. The confidence you see in the people around me is down in large part to the success of the British inoculation programme, with more than two thirds of adults here now fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Though cases of the Delta variant are increasing and there are now concerns of a third wave of coronavirus. I'm Zarek Kassam in Johannesburg, South Africa. 
The Rainbow Nation is in the grips of its third COVID wave. Hospitals are under immense strain driven by the spread of the more transmissible Delta variant, which has caused an average of 15,000 new COVID infections daily. To stem the rise of infections, the government has placed stricter measures on the public, banning the sale of alcohol, prohibiting gatherings, dining in restaurants, and travel to or from Gauteng, the worst hit province in the country. In Johannesburg, the effects of these stricter rules can be seen with many people staying at home. The area that I'm standing in Sandton is considered the richest square mile in Africa. Many of the high rises behind me are empty and businesses are struggling to stay open. With many South Africans adhering to government policies of wearing masks, keeping a social distance and sanitizing, many are blaming the president and his party for taking too long to vaccinate the nation. So far, in a population of 59 million citizens, less than 1 million people have received the COVID jab. I'm Prachita Sharma in Mumbai. I'm in a marketplace in Mumbai city. And while the stores and restaurants and bars have opened up in Mumbai and the city has gradually unlocked itself in the last couple of weeks, we're still seeing a certain sense of caution in the way people are stepping out. And that's because the second wave was very severe and Mumbai was badly hit by it. There is a certain sense of fear attached to right now moving about because Mumbai is a very densely populated city. People are wearing double masks and ensuring that they stay safe and try to maintain distance, but it's unavoidable naturally in marketplaces. Restaurants are still waiting for crowds to come back and for patrons to come back. But uh, definitely the fact that they can stay open is uh, a great respite for them. Theatres and malls are still shut, so that's going to take some time. Unlike Delhi city, India's capital, where everything has opened up, and Mumbai is still recording an average of 700 to 800 active COVID cases per day. We do see that what has given confidence to the people is, of course, the momentum that the vaccination drive has picked up all across India, particularly in the urban centers. Right now, uh, India has surpassed the U.S. as well in terms of its vaccines, and it's the second most vaccinated country right now in the world. But uh, we're still a long way to go because of the population that we have in India. I am James Himes outside of Brisbane City Hall in Queensland, Australia. Normally the Brisbane CBD is bustling with activity, but right now we have a virtually empty city. That is a result of COVID-19 and the lockdown that the Queensland government has implemented. People have been told to stay in their homes wherever possible and to work from home if they can. The outcome of this initiative is that businesses in the CBD are struggling. For the businesses that can and do open, their sales are down substantially, with most suggesting sales are down between, say, 30 and 90%. I spoke to one business that went an entire day without a customer. It's difficult to remain open, and many businesses have shut down, with the retail and hospitality sectors operating at unsustainable losses. The Queensland Chamber of Commerce estimates that every three days under lockdown costs small businesses between 12 and $58,000. They want the government to help these businesses stay afloat. As for the public, well, nearly everyone is complying with the government directive for them to wear a mask, and if they need to leave their home, to socially distance. However, the rollout and uptake of vaccinations has been very slow in Australia, with around 5% of the Australian population vaccinated against COVID-19. The number of vaccinated Australians are expected to rise substantially over the coming weeks. Regardless, Public sentiment is very dim right now and people really just want COVID, lockdowns and social isolation to all be over. When you're back, we've got an inside look at how virtual reality is transforming emergency rooms. 